This is Quentin Reynolds welcoming you to Operation Success. How does a man become a success under our system of free enterprise? Is there a basic pattern to follow a set of rules, a guidepost to success? I don't think so. Some of our guests started out in meager circumstances, some with silver spoons in their mouths. Some made their marks early in life, some quite late. Some never graduated from elementary school. Others were brilliant scholars with many degrees. These people did not conform to any pattern, but they all had one bond in common, success. This is the free bar story. It centers around the company's product, Bars Leaks, universally used to seal engine cooling systems and prevent them from leaking. As it unfolds, you will see something of product manufacturing and use. But mostly, this segment of Operation Success will attempt to tell the formula for success. How better may we learn the path to success than to ask a man who has obtained it? We are going to prevail upon Mr. Fred Barton, founder of Freebar for the Keys. In our initial interviews with Mr. Barton, several of his characteristics that led to success were readily apparent. To follow his course, we'll need a continuing interest in the world about us, but most of all, an interest in, concern for, and appreciation of people. We will need abounding energy, enjoyment of living, and an unending desire to create and build. In the late 1940s, Mr. Barton borrowed $150 and set about to manufacture Barr's leaks in his backyard. Free Bar and many other of his endeavors were eminently successful when he built this beautiful restaurant. Why? Because he wanted such a place to exist. So it is with creative energy. Builders must believe in their projects and they must build. But people are the mainstay of any success story. Here, Mr. Barton is visiting with a wholesaler he called on years ago when he was the only Bars Leak salesman. Mr. Barton speaks of the wholesaler as the doorway to free enterprise. Let's take our cameras to the center of the automotive industry near Flint in Pontiac, Michigan, and drop in on the pleasant little community of Holly to ask Mr. Barton what he has found to be the most valuable asset in the search for success. Mr. Barton? Everybody but everybody loves a hard worker. That's one of the beliefs that came to me when I started selling back in the Depression days. Many of the benefits that have come over the years, I truly believe, have been because of working. I believed now as I believed then that a good salesman had to be honest, friendly, agreeably aggressive, and above all, observing. That observation was the key. The observation mainly came in the approach to the car, or as a prelude to the approach to see what type of condition we were faced with. The approach was one of ease, being sure to be not cocksure, and to break the smile when it caught the dealer's eye. The presentation was easy. Questions and questions should be used by salesmen to divert thoughts which interfere with the presentation. Then comes the close. We should sell with as few points as possible. And then when the sale is made, we promote, tell the story, and then our prospect believed it. That is the basis of this company. Bars Leaks was invented in 1947 in California, when after experiences in a sales training school, I decided that if I were to be properly compensated for the work which I had done, I had to get a product to sell. Bars Leaks was the answer. And I say today, if I could perform my respective station in life as adequately and efficiently as this product, I would be 
a great man. This, of course, is a simple demonstration. I use this demonstration, and after the first call, the man said to me, anything that will stop a leak like that will plug a radiator. Demonstration being one of the strongest forms of sale. I went home, picked up a piece of window screen, went down to the 10 cent store, got a funnel and a strainer, and proceeded to make an arrangement which I could pour my product through to demonstrate that it would cause no clogging action. You notice the material passed through this arrangement, and I thought it was quite conclusive. The service station operator asked me if his product would do the same thing. So I took the product off of his shelf and proceeded to go through the same performance. The leak stopped. However, when we started passing it through the arrangement, we found it didn't run through as rapidly. And in fact, to my utter amazement, we found material on the screen, which to me had evidence that this product had stopped the leak by laying over the leak and would have a tendency to wash back in. The dealer was thoroughly convinced, and I came to the conclusion I would go anywhere they were selling that product and demonstrate. Of course, as the years went by, almost every product in America was demonstrated. We had a patent application applied for, and our process went through where eventually we were selling the major manufacturers for their redistribution in the aftermarket and also on the production line. It was in 1949, I believe, that the first call was made on the Buick car, Motor Car Company. Uh, they actually tested the product until its usage late in 1952 when it became a standard production item in 1953, which you might say was the real big break in my business. Up to that time, we had tried to guard our frontiers. We were a West Coast organization very much. We had the deserts and we had sparsely located cities in Idaho and Western Montana, and we tried to cover them with such thoroughness that no other product could come in from the east and enter the west. In that manner, we felt that we did have some semblance of remaining in this field. In the beginning, I had no idea we could stop an internal leak against compression. It wasn't until many months later that the trade itself informed me of this miraculous thing. And then, of course, we learned that we had additional benefits in reducing corrosion, rust, and scaling, and also lubricated the water pump. However, again, we could not catch up to the product because the product was just too good. I had not hoped for a product that would give all the benefits of buyer's leak. I had hoped only for a product that was just as good as the other fellow. Mr. Barton, your beautiful home, its grounds, and newly created lakes are some of the benefits of energetically applying the right to market a brand in our free enterprise system. But you seem to be constantly seeking new outlets for your creative energy. What caused you to enter into the restaurant business? Of course, the Hawaiian Gardens was a hobby, so to speak, but it actually was my first contact in many, many years, directly with the public. Up to that time, my life had been spent selling through the wholesaler, the doorway of free enterprise, through the retailer, to the consumer. And I did, in these late years of my life, want to have more direct contact with the consumer. And believe me, there is no place on earth where you can have that contact any better than in a restaurant. Speaking of staying in touch with the consumer, 
Changing automobile designs must have affected the demand for bars leaks. There have been tremendous advancements in metallurgy and engineering of internal combustion engines. What are some of the main differences between this old engine and the ones today? The old style engine, the sidewalls were about three eighths of an inch thick. The new engine design, some of the sidewalls were as low as 180,000. I did not know this when I went into business with this product. I first started out selling a radiator stop leak. Just where we learned along the line that this product served a particular function in a new design engine, I could not be sure. But that every time we did sell a bottle of bars leak, we were performing a public service. This small plant, Bars Products of Michigan, with Bob and Jack Alexander, my first continuous franchises, was the original Bars Leaks factory when we moved back from San Jose, California to Taylor, Michigan. The first franchise took over this building when we were forced to go to larger quarters. I had had one franchise before that in Texas, which had failed because they had failed to demonstrate. That would be the franchise taken over by Ralph and Ward McDowell. Where did you find them? In Oakland, California. They followed the same demonstration pattern and sales program, which we had adhered to. McClurkin went back to Pennsylvania and is still there today and still on the demonstration program. Johnny Larson took over the farm country and adhered to the demonstration. Bob Downey took over the Missouri, Arkansas, and Colorado area, and he too adhered to the same demonstration and sales pattern. However, when we got together, we would make use of everyone's information and knowledge to make a more cohesive uh, organization. For example, this personality bottle, we call it, where we put the name of the jobber on the side of each bottle, was the idea of Jack Alexander of Bars Product of Michigan. The little radiator sections, which we demonstrate with, now in addition to the others, was the contribution of Charles McClurkin of Pennsylvania. Many, many, many contributions were made by these fellows and we work as a unit rather than as each individual uh, working on his own independent system. I question whether I would have failed had I not had franchises. I had never solicited them. They all came to me because they had heard the product was good, but I know certainly that the benefits would not have been as great without them. However, I operated singly in the West Coast area until 1950. Private labeling for most of the major car manufacturers is a big part of our business. In the motor manual, the Bible of the industry, we were listed, bars leaked, or equivalent. It is the first time a product has been mentioned by name. This acceptance of your product as a standard is certainly a reflection of the engineering that lies behind it. I understand that one of your programs of testing and quality control is that of adding bars leaks to the cooling system, placing the system under lock and key, then running the car for an extensive period of time. Who supervises these programs, and who keeps the keys during the test period? They are held by a disinterested party. So that after a period of time, we can dismantle the radiator, take off the hose connections for inspection, and can remove the water pump so that we ourselves can determine had there been any deleterious effects. This is a simple means of testing 
However, to the best of my knowledge, no other group in America has ever used the lock cooling system. We've demonstrated our confidence by driving a new car from Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco to Brooklyn Hellgate Bridge without the addition of any liquid to the cooler. Perhaps the greatest achievement that I've had was the Nautilus submarine. In August, the Nautilus condensers had not been repaired, although it had been to Pearl Harbor and Bear Island. Then in Seattle, they placed 75 bottles in this unit, circulated for 24 hours. They felt they had to make the trip under the ice cap in August because they did not know what the conditions would be in the winter. Now we know we can be under there all year round. This is the making of a three-par golf course. No one can say that we're afraid to make changes. We believe that any company that is inflexible in its rules eventually must be in trouble. We believe that the strongest point of a small company is its flexibility, its ability to see things in the field and bring them back and make changes. In many cases before the large company knows that the changes are there. The greatest single accomplishment of this operation, as you see it here, the dread in the motel, hotel, and the many other benefits, is the fact that in America, it can still be done. That the greatest right of an individual is the right of an individual to create, to produce, or to devise a product and market it as a brand. And it can still be done in America. And as long as it can be done, we will remain the greatest nation in the world. In America today, the salesman is perhaps the highest paid profession in the country. Yes, it is a profession. I actually became a success in 1933 when I stopped worrying about what made someone buy, buying motivation and started thinking in terms of what makes something sell. I didn't go in business until I was 39 years old. In fact, there were times and periods when I felt that perhaps the combination of the right product would not come along. But Barge Leaks did come along, and Barge Leaks was successful. And I have been informed that if all the bottles of barley were placed in a pile, it would make a mouth as large as Mount Shasta. The motel is designed for families. We're introducing one of the Florida Everglades swamp boats, which will be able to take the children around through the three lakes. No land that I have is idle. It is all planted with trees. Some of it, of course, is well forested. Arrowhead Lake, charming thing. Well stocked with 24-inch pike and catfish. And of course, the Monu, the Motel. This is Ray Coyle, uh, one of the merchandisers for the American Motor Car Company. I see many of my friends in the restaurant, although I do not spend too much time in there. We were very delighted that the palm trees, which we brought up from Florida, the place in the Monu, and the other vegetation, did so well in this area. Uh, the Monu, of course, represents that structure which was used by Polynesians to test the eligibility of marriage for their young men. They would place a vine around their left ankle and make them dive off of this tower so that their head had to be inserted slightly in the sand. 
and if they survived this test, they were eligible for marriage. I have always liked Hawaii. Hawaii has been a state of mind to me. It has been a state for many years before it became a United States. This facet, the Maori Room or Waitomo Grotto, is the land of the Maori, probably the largest collection uh, of Polynesians still live in New Zealand. Chinese food has been accepted as Polynesian because of the advent of the many Chinese in the Hawaiian Islands in the early uh, 1900s and late 1800s. Uh, while it is not the largest population in the Hawaiian Islands, they have fit in to the Hawaiian pattern. This abaki, the custom of the hot towel when you arrive, was brought back from Japan. I have heard numerous Americans mention this is one thing that we should do in America. Soup is served last. Contrary to American customs, a place to relax. An environment of the soft, colorful, tropical paradise of the South Pacific Islands. That is what we've tried to capture. Those succulent tidbits, a delight to the palate, sweet and sour pork. In all, our menu consists of 21 Polynesian dishes and five Western dishes. The use of chopsticks uh, is taught during weekdays to anyone that desires to learn. Uh, it is amazing how many of our guests, while not adept, do enjoy the use of the chopsticks. But the main thing in the restaurant is the atmosphere. We have tried to capture that easy state of mind that exists in Polynesia. Around the lakes at night, the lights and torches are lit, simulating the customs of Polynesia. Drinks of beauty. And believe me, people like them too. Uh, are featured. Some for a single person and some for more. Yes, friends, the coconuts are real coconuts. Yes, the roaring volcano. The taco, this particular waitress, waitress, the Japanese. And uh, he's been in America possibly four or five years. A pleasant girl. And she adds to the state of mind which exists in the white home of Bravo. Beautiful. I wish there was such a restaurant in every American city. The Shangri-La apartments in Reno, Nevada are another of your properties that are graced with such comfort. Here the guests have gathered in the early evening in this casual, relaxed western atmosphere. Industry is drawn to Reno by its mainline railroad, sportsmen by its proximity to mountains and lakes. Whatever the reason for visiting Reno, the traveler will find that his stay is enhanced by the way of life expressed at the Shangri-La. Your approach in the hotel and restaurant business has a certain flair. Uh, have you introduced something new? They say there is nothing new under the sun and that to be successful we must do the same thing different and that it is actually the little things that make the big difference so as with Barzix at the Hukilao restaurant we have tried to do the little things that make the big difference and we have tried conscientiously to do perhaps the same thing different. Success in business and in life itself 
is an elusive and difficult thing to obtain. Over these scenes of the mayor of Reno bestowing the title of Honorary Ambassador of Goodwill on Mr. Barton, let us extend our thanks for his willingness to share his experiences and knowledge, and let us hope that this segment of Operation Success has contributed to those of us who would like to take advantage of the American free enterprise system in our desire to build a better way of life. Mr. Barton recently organized the RIS Foundation and endowed it with well over $100,000 to provide scholarships to students preparing for business careers. The initials RIS stand for the right of the individual to sell. In Mr. Barton's words, it can still be done here in America. And as long as the right to freely create products and market them prevails, America will continue to be the greatest nation on earth. This is Quentin Reynolds thanking you for being with us. We will be back again next week at the same time. In the meanwhile, may I wish you continued success in whatever you may be doing. Yeah.